Hi, my name is Greg, and I worked as a stand-in on this particular episode of Promised Land. Let me tell you about how we did it. This was the summer of 1996, and in the storyline, we're in Evanston, Wyoming. But in fact, we are on Main Street of Lehigh, Utah. It didn't make a lot of sense to go to Evanston, Wyoming. It was a little bit too far away. And of course, we had all the infrastructure and people that we were used to working with uh, right there, experienced people in the general Salt Lake City area. So we paid tribute to Evanston, Wyoming without actually going there. Uh, in the storyline, they've come to Evanston, which is the, the home of a famous rock star who died years ago called Graham Riley. And it uh, turns out that uh, Claire, the mom on the show, was a big fan of Graham Riley back in the day. And so they've brought her to the Graham Riley Music Festival. Uh, had, a, had a good time dressing up this part of Main Street to look like the, uh, the headquarters of some, you know, rock and roll, bohemian kind of Woodstock throwback sort of music festival. But we only dressed up really the one side of the street. And so they actually, uh, for some of the close-ups where you're seeing, looking out the window here in the background, uh, they actually um, would just turned the vehicle around and went the other way, uh, you know, and then moved the cameras around. So you're, you're really only looking at one side of the street uh, through all of this. Now, uh, in the storyline, Graham Riley, he, he's kind of a throwback, I would say, to like a Jim Morrison kind of a character. Uh, someone who was very well known as a poet, philosopher kind of thing. Um, you know, just extremely talented, but uh, lived a hard life and died from a drug overdose. And, and yet they still pay tribute to him. At this uh, at this music festival. Now, this actually right here, we're not we're no longer in Lehigh, Utah. We're at Liberty Park, in uh, not quite the heart of Salt Lake City, but just sort of southeast of the heart of Salt Lake City. Uh, they dressed it up to look like a campground, and um, but there's really there's never any camping there. And then they set up this stage and these scaffolding and all, all this stuff to to make it look like we were having this. This giant concert there, which we eventually did have some sort of a concert uh, in the evening when we were when we were shooting all of this stuff. And now here they're having a uh, reminiscing here about how both Claire and Russell went to Woodstock back in the day, although they didn't go together. They didn't know each other back then. It sort of, you know, it's it's one of those things where the the background of these characters gets a little extraordinary. I don't know what the chances are of any couple this age uh, having, you know, it's like, did the whole world uh, go to Woodstock uh, back in 1969? I don't think so. But it just so happens that uh, within the storyline, something extraordinary in their backgrounds, they both went to uh, Woodstock. Now, uh, we're about to meet uh, a, a character called Trevor in the story. And the, the name of this uh, episode is The Prodigy. And this uh, young man here, Trevor, is the prodigy, just this extremely talented musician uh, that we're going to get to know here pretty soon. Starts out looking like a troublemaker. Uh, he's, you know, security's kicked him out of some vendor's tent because he was messing around with the uh, the banjo. And then the kid says, no, I, w I wasn't messing around with it, I was fixing it. And then I heard the vendor's like, yeah, whoa, what do you know, that kid really did fix it. Gee, thanks. And here you see the first image of Graham Riley. Uh, this uh, based on a photograph that was taken. Uh, I'm not sure who they got to play the part of Graham Riley in the show, but you never actually see him except for in uh, still photos. So I, I'm not, like I said, I'm not, I'm not sure who they got, but I think it just somebody could have been an actor, could have been a model, could have just been someone who somebody knew that just fit the role i don't i wasn't involved in the casting um but they they managed to take this image of this person and and uh, the art department created these murals and uh you know flyers and whatever they needed to do to kind of support the idea that there was this giant music festival going on in this man's honor so we got to look at that face all all week as we were <laughs> as we were shooting the show because of all the all that Graham Riley stuff that they had created. 
Now, I say that the character seems to have a lot of characteristics of, uh, say, Jim Morrison. Uh, but in fact, uh, a lot of things just don't add up. Uh, they talk about it as though Graham Riley performed at Woodstock, and yet it was years and years later that he died of a drug overdose. Hey, there, there's a dog called Husker, uh, and the guy walking the dog is um, is one of our crew guys. That's his real-life dog, and they're a little cameo there. Hey, but what you're seeing right here, I believe, is the first time we actually showed the interior of the Airstream trailer set that was built uh, specifically for this series. If you look, uh, you know, here they are all living in this Airstream trailer, and, uh, you know, that seems like a pretty cramped space for six people, three children and three adults. Or, you know, three young people, I guess. They're not quite children. But what you see here is actually um, has been enlarged from the original size of the Airstream trailer. Uh, the art department took a real Airstream trailer, removed it from its frame, set it on top of a platform, and added about three feet uh, to its width. So as you look up and you can notice the, the ceiling of the Airstream trailer, it looks kind of like a skylight or something. And when they show the Airstream trailer from the exterior, it doesn't look like it has a skylight up there. But they managed to create that uh, in order to sell the idea uh, that, that this looks like normal. Now, this is not the most egregious... Uh, <laughs> Uh, what you could call the TARDIS effect, you know, like Doctor Who fans, they know that the TARDIS is bigger on the inside. Uh, if you look at the old original Jurassic Park movie from 1993, there's a scene in there where uh, uh, Mr. Hammond shows up at a dinosaur dig in Montana, and uh, he goes into a, a, a trailer they have there, at the dig, and then there's a scene inside that trailer, and that thing's huge compared to uh, to what it was on the outside. So um, it's a little bit of a cheat what they've done for the Promised Land Airstream trailer, um, but not nearly as bad as what they did in Jurassic Park. Uh, we'll talk about that Airstream trailer a lot because it's 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 cool what they did. Uh, now now here you are on a set that they built at our soundstage a moment earlier you were actually back on the streets outside uh, in, in Lehigh back on Main Street in Lehigh uh, RJ's music shop and then here they are in a set that we built to kind of you know match uh, what it might have looked like from the interior you know exterior into the interior and what you're seeing here the character uh, RJ who is the music store owner operator is played by uh, the real life rock star Joe Walsh. We had Joe Walsh on the show. And I think I may have said in the past, so I can't believe we put Joe Walsh on our show and we didn't have him play a single note of music. But a moment ago you saw him playing the uh, the oboe uh, a few notes there. So so we actually did have him play a few notes of music. Uh, lots of guitars around him in the episode, and he didn't play a single note on a guitar, the instrument he's most well known for for using in his professional life. But you know, we had he he did a little bit of acting uh, around this time. I think I might have even seen him on the, maybe the Drew Carey show, or I saw him on some other like a sitcom about this time. And he happened to be on our show. Now this is the you, you just a moment ago saw the exterior, and now you're seeing the interior of. A real location, uh, one branch of the Salt Lake uh, County Library System. I think this is on Ninth West uh, in Salt Lake. I'm not sure how far south it is, but um, yeah, this is a real library, not a real librarian. <laughs> what well, is an act, a local actress on the show? And this is where Dinah is finding out a little bit about the real background of uh, Graham Riley, the music uh, rock star that everyone's honoring. And so this person, uh, the librarian, says, oh, yeah, everybody around here knew, knew Graham Riley, and she's trying to do some research ab about Graham Riley. And wait a minute, what is this? She's looking through an old magazine, and she sees this photograph. What's funny in this photograph is we got the guy who they used to, to be the, the Graham Riley you know, model, whatever, uh, that they used to, to create all that, other, all that other artwork. Next to him is Claire... Like whoa, this is the a, a big deal for uh, 
for Dinah to realize that her mom hung out with his rock star back in the day. The other two people you see in that photograph uh, were uh, Don, a guy who was our assistant director, our first assistant director on this episode. And uh, next to him, uh, a, a blonde woman with, with uh, you know, long blonde hair. Uh, looking very much like she's right out of the 60s or the early 70s. And that woman was is the real-life mother of Austin O'Brien, who played Josh in the episode. So they managed to get Don, Austin's mom, of course, Wendy Phillips playing the part of Claire, and then this other person that was uh, being Graham Riley, all in that photograph together. Now, Dinah's going to conceal this photo from her mother because... She's really having a hard time with the fact that her mother hung out with this rock star, and she's also learning that this rock star had a very dark past and, you know, died from a drug overdose and, you know, just all this, all, all these terrible uh, things in his background. And, and wow, isn't it weird that mom was uh, somehow involved in all that? Whoa, what, what, what's going on? So it was a theme that uh, I suppose a lot of parents have to deal with. Especially parents who may have been uh, teenagers back in the 60s or the 70s and maybe experimented with things that they don't want their own teenage uh, offspring to be messing around with. And so I, I guess that's, you know, that's a real concern. What do you do when you were a little wild when you were younger and you just don't want your kids to even try to do that. And then they say, well, wait a minute, you did it when you were my age. Well, that's different. You know, so that's going to come up in this episode. All right. Now, uh, we've established while I was yakking away and you couldn't hear what was actually happening in, <laughs> happening in the episode, we established that Nathaniel stole all the uh, guitar strings from, from Josh's guitar. And so when Josh went to uh, try and buy some new guitar strings at RJ's music shop, RJ said, you know what? If you're good with guitars, I want, I want to hire you to tune up these guitars. And, you know, you, you can earn your strings and even more if you want to just uh, work for me for, for a little bit. So that's why that Josh has he's in the back room there work, working on guitars. And so now uh, Josh gets to meet Trevor, and Josh gets to see that th that guitar that Trevor was playing, and now that Josh is holding, was Graham Riley's guitar. It was in the window for like $120,000 is the asking price, and now, uh, you know, Trevor was playing it, and Josh gets to, uh, to play the guitar, so he think that's uh, pretty cool. So, um, you know, Trevor says, hey, let's jam. What do you want to play? Josh says, oh, let's play something from, from Graham Riley. Now, this is where it becomes very difficult for the music composer who's working on the show. And usually, the guy who wrote music for the Promised Land show was back in Los Angeles working in the post-production line of things with the editors and watching the edited uh, things from the show and, and creating the music that, that goes along with, uh, with Promised Land. In this case, that guy came to set to be with us as we were shooting all these scenes. And I think he even said, you know, he gets this challenge of having to... He has to write the music that is supposedly this incredibly fabulous music of the great Graham Riley. And so here they are supposedly playing that amazing music. Now, Trevor's mom comes in and says, hey... Trevor, you're not supposed to be here. And RJ, you know better than to let him hang out here in your music shop. And, and so, of course, RJ's upset. And this is where you find out what's really going on with Trevor and his mom. He says, uh, oh, that's, that's Graham's widow, Pam Riley. And that kid is Graham Riley's son. He's a gifted musician. He's never had a lesson in his life.